Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and as you can see, I'm at Walt Disney World. <laughs> well, um, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, uh, am I making this video just to show off the fact that I'm at Walt Disney World? Uh, kinda, yeah. But imagine my surprise upon arriving here at the Magic Kingdom that I discover there's actually a trading card game for this. So, today I will be reviewing Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom is a new card game created for use in the Magic Kingdom of Walt Disney World. However, it isn't a trading card game in the traditional sense, as, rather than playing against other players, the cards are used in a game built into the Magic Kingdom itself. Dispersed throughout the Magic Kingdom are little portals, or windows, into the world of Disney movies, and the cards are used to interact with the scenes inside. It's like a sort of re-cobbled Eye of Judgment game, with cameras poking out around each portal to detect the cards being used. You get your starter pack of five cards at either the Main Street Fire Station or behind the Christmas store in Liberty Square. It's considered part of the cost of admission, so it's no extra cost and you can get an additional pack of five cards each day you come to the park. The starter pack also includes a map and a key card. This key card is used to activate the portals by swiping them over locks near where the portals will appear. Keys, locks, and Disney villains, huh? Where have I seen that before? Oh, oh, you startled me, sorcerer. The portals have been placed in locations that would be unobtrusive and seldom noticed. Or they would be, except for the fact that there's really long lines in front of them. I swear, the ways for these portals have been as long as Dumbo's sometimes. I'm just glad a lot of these portals are indoors or undercover. The story is that Hades, the baddie from the Hercules movie, wants to take over the Magic Kingdom and turn it into his summer home or something. However, he needs to swipe a crystal ball that protects the Magic Kingdom from evil. The crystal belongs to Merlin from the Sword in the Stone. When Hades' minions, Pain and Panic, try to steal the crystal, Merlin attacks them and ends up shattering the crystal into eight pieces. Huh, it's the Knuckles the Echidna slash Inuyasha method of crystal defense, huh? So now it's a race between Hades and Merlin to try to get the crystal pieces to either rebuild the crystal or prevent it from being rebuilt. To do this, Hades hires a bunch of Disney villains across the timeline in order to help him. To stop the villains, you must use several portals that are scattered across Main Street, Fantasyland, Frontierland, and Adventureland. There are nine chapters in all, eight for the villains and the last one for Hades himself, and each chapter takes place in one area of the park. The villains are fought in random order and you can actually request your starting place upon arrival at the park. Each chapter has four stages. First you get in contact with Merlin and are then passed over to a character from the movie the villain you are facing is from who then gives you your mission. When I find the crystal, I shall be king forever. <laughs> you must stop Scar. After each stage, you are shown which portal you need to go to next, so it's time to whip out your map, find the next portal, and get moving. The second stage is a minor fight against one of the cronies of the main bad guys or the main villain in an initial encounter. This is where you finally get to use your spell cards to attack. Hold your spell card close to your body, moving it slowly if the card isn't initially detected to get it to work. If done right, the card's attack will appear on screen and you will win your first battle. There's a huge variety of spell cards with several types, like Princess, Warrior, Machine, Monster, and Fairy. There are also several attack types, such as Gross or Wishful. While most of the cards are heroes, there are actually several villains mixed in, like Monstro, the Headless Horseman, the Queen of Hearts, and the Rock Titan. There are also some questionable choices made for card types, like why is Quasimodo a monster card? Wasn't the point of Hunchback in Notre Dame about how he wasn't a monster? There's also the continually roiling debate about making Mulan a princess, as opposed to, say, a warrior or a hero. There's also a nice variety of attack animations, with some being a smack in the face, while others bury the enemy in rubble. However, the most interesting attack card is actually the Blue Fairy, which looks like a nuclear bomb going off. No! Yeah, you know, that character who showed up for like two minutes in Pinocchio? She gets one of the most epic attacks in the game! There are several numbers printed on the card as well, but since the parks were locked in easy mode during my visit, apparently they didn't really have any meaning. The next stage is what I call the event stage, as rather than getting into a fight, you need to do something subtle or perform a trick to get through the stage without blasting it away with attack magic. This involves using the Sorcerer's Crest, the image printed on the backs of the cards, to trigger a spell effect and continue. What are you doing? Up, 
The final stage of the chapter is the showdown, where you fight the main villain of the movie or their powered up form if you have confronted them once already. This battle is a bit harder and takes a few swings to win. After this, you recover the crystal piece, return it to Merlin, and they proclaim the stage clear, but invite you to keep playing since there are still more villains to deal with. In Chapter 8, the villain, whoever they might be, reveals halfway through the fight that they have already captured the crystal piece and given it to Pain and Panic to take to Hades. Time to head to Frontierland to finish things. After busting into the underworld and stopping Pain and Panic, you are confronted by Hades who then unleashes a mountain in the future, you know what I mean? But he's a real soul star. Uh oh. Oh, this isn't good. What kind of overwhelming force could I possibly have that could even have a hope of triumphing over the might and power of. Oh, right. always willing to mentor other minions. Uh, hey, wait a minute, we're not through. The final stage sends you straight into the heart of the underworld. Hades is ready to make his move, but Merlin has fixed the crystal. However, pain and panic incapacitate him, and it's up to you to save the day! One final flash of the sorcerer's crest, and... <laughs> After this, peace is restored, Hades and the villains are defeated, and you are given the title of Master Sorcerer of the Magic Kingdom. What does this get you? Another pack of cards and a new game plus. Not too bad, I guess, but the thing is, clearing all nine stages can take upwards of five hours! Time that could be spent going on rides and stuff! Fortunately, you do not have to clear it all in one day, so if you have an extended visit to the park, you can mix playing the game with going on rides in the area you end up in. Then again, this is a decent way to help you get good mileage if you have a season pass. Get a pack of cards, play a couple chapters, go on a few rides, not a half bad way to spend a weekend. Now there's actually more to this game than just playing the cards. Granted, the numbers currently have no meaning, but you can still perform... Combination attacks. Combination attacks allow you to play more than one card at once. While they don't do anything extra since the park is in easy mode, it still creates an interesting visual spectacle and it can be interesting to experiment with possible combos. While combos can obviously be performed with cards that match card type, or attack type, You can also combine cards with similar premises. For example, while Prince Philip's attack looks like this on its own, adding in his princess creates a combination attack. Great, but did he listen? No, he wants to be a cloud. Who's afraid of a cloud? Ah! This actually applies to all cards that have characters that come from the same movie. For example, combining Rapunzel, Flynn, and Maximus, all from the movie Tangled, together creates this combination attack. Even cards with similar ideas can work, such as the otherwise unrelated Mr. Toad and Lightning McQueen, since they both involve cards. I haven't managed to get it to work, but I've heard Lumiere and Pumbaa make a dynamite combo. Each pack contains five cards, usually two planet cards, the common equivalent, two moon cards, the uncommon equivalent, and one double star card, the rares. If you're stuck within the resort like I was, Mitsukoshi in Epcot Japan was more than happy to sell me a binder to hold all my cards in. It can take a little time to collect the star cards, since there are 22 different kinds and only one per pack, but by harvesting my family members, beating the game a couple of times, and a little wheeling and dealing, I was able to make a complete set of all 60 cards in about a week, barring my visits to other parks. Wait, 60? Then why does the card say it's part of a set of 70? Well, those would be the Lightning Bolt Rarity cards. Cards so rare they are pretty much impossible to find. I've heard rumors, like they were available for beta testers or the first week, or that they are like 1 in 300 packs. 
I only had about a week to collect this data, so it's not easy to say. The most common theory I've heard is that they had a very short run during beta testing and early trials and are currently not available in packs, but might return in the fall. But in the meantime, the sheer rarity of these cards makes popular characters such as Ariel and Jasmine out of reach of the casual collector. Kind of a shame, I'd like to see what the Meriwether and Hercules cards do. Then again, I've heard that the game is proxy friendly and will recognize cards that you printed off of your computer. Still, like every other card game out there, it's just more satisfying to have the actual card for yourself. So, in conclusion, the game is pretty fun and not a half bad way to spend a season pass or even just doing a single stage to give it a try. It does seem to be the new pin trading as there are many people in the park looking to complete their collections. There are some limitations, however, such as the regretful lack of player versus player or another way to use the cards without being at the park, and the sometimes iffy card detection that might not detect a full combo, something that likely caused problems at the higher difficulties and made the already fairly large lines even worse. Perhaps it would be beneficial if rules were written up to allow a player versus player card game which can be played anywhere, and if something else could be done to make it easier to find the sweet spots in the detection range of the cameras. Another one I heard a lot from fellow park guests would be the ability to skip the cutscenes which can often be upward of two minutes long and might just be you getting your assignment. The ability to skip the cutscene straight into the fight, event, or new location needed could help speed up the attraction and keep the crowds in check and prevent spoilers, with the added stipulation of only being able to get one additional pack of cards per day due to the accelerated game along with still requiring the legwork to go between portals and the fighting in the event scenes. Ideally, this option would be disabled in your first playthrough so you can see the full cutscenes without interruption and scene skipping would be an added prize for clearing the game the first time. Well, so far, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom seems to have been a successful experiment. We'll see where it goes in the future, perhaps with more villains added or more terminals when the renovations to Fantasyland are finished. Until then, it's certainly fun and if you plan on going to Disney World anytime soon, at least try playing it while you're taking a break from the rides, as the added legwork can certainly help you balance out that cheeseburger you had at Cosmic Rays. That was Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, and this is Kodok signing off.